Survivor Specialist Phil and Alexa are back with another one of our Season 40 Winner Retrospectives. Today, we are joined by Jonas Otsuji from Survivor One World, who's going to be breaking down Kim Spradlin's game here. Jonas, this is interesting because you didn't play that many days where you were actually on a tribe with Kim, Mm -hmm. but you had the interesting One World twist where you got to play a lot of days on the same beach as Kim. So yeah. this this should be fun to break down. Kim is somebody people are very excited to see. Everybody wants to see if she can play as dominant of a game the second time. But thanks so much for joining us. We're super excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, but the the one thing that I – so the, the thought that I had was this. Like you get like the best liars of all time – playing against all the other liars and they all know that they're liars. So this is going to be like one trippy (laughs) experiment because it's like everybody knows that the other people are good at lying. So it's going to be one big, like uh, paranoia. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, and it's, when you look at the group of people here, aside from the people who have played multiple times and lost, it's hard to imagine certain people having their torches snuffed. Somebody like Kim, somebody like, uh, you know, Wendell, somebody like Yule. It's hard to imagine them yeah. having their torches because it's never happened before. And yeah. every one of these people is going to end up having their torch snuffed except for three because I'm assuming <clears throat> it's final three. And only yeah. one's going to end up winning. Yeah. Well, so like Tony, right? He mm-hmm. came back and he immediately got snuffed. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if it's going to be similar where the, the obvious – super duper radical intense players are just going to get knocked out quickly. I mean, I think that's what's going to happen. And I I wouldn't be surprised if Kim was one of the earlier ones just because, I mean, uh, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but um, at the live finale during my season, um, Richard Hatch was in the audience. Did you hear this story? No, no. I know. I know Troy's hand said he played like Hatch. Troyzen said he played like Hatch. He said that he said that on at your finale. He is on air saying people are telling me I played as good as Richard Hatch, but not to distract from your story. I just okay, want to bring yeah, that up any so, chance I can. <laughs> no, I don't think they said that about Troyzen, but Richard Hatch himself. So um, it went to break, and Jeff was like, "Hey, we got Richard Hatch in the audience," and everybody's like, "Yay, hey, Richard!" And then uh, Richard was like, "I just want to say, Kim." You played uh, the the most amazing game ever in the history of Survivor, and everybody's like, "Yeah!" So, I mean, that's a that is a big compliment. compliment. Saying that you played the most insane game ever, so yeah, just a little, you know, inside scoop there. Mm. That's that's one of that's probably the best compliment you can get. Oh and yeah, I, that's for something. sure. I was. I mean, let's put it this way. When Richard Hatch knew my name, I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just been validated. <laughs> I just hope that nobody else in attendance at your finale is on this season because then they'll have no idea that Richard Hatch thinks so highly of Kim. It's all of you who, who know. So yeah. hopefully none of the other winners, you know, you didn't have like eight-year-old Adam Klein sitting in the uh, audience hearing Richard Hatch say that Kim Spradlin was the best player that he's ever yeah. seen. So yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. well, well, there's not going to be one world on this season, but but no. early on in that game, no, no. I know that was really the most you interacted with Kim, right? It was probably early on, or did you not even really yeah. interact with her much out there? <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, we were on the same beach, but we we're obviously on separate tribes, so we kind of kept our distance. Um, but the few interactions that I did have with her, they were just, they seemed super genuine. She She has that, like, super genuine like she'll just look at you and she's so believable like Mm her her bs is like completely believable and um i don't know so i asked her about this after the show was done and i'm like man how do you do this like how do you lie so well because i i completely sucked at lying and i told the producers they're like oh what are you most I'm, you know, nervous about. I'm like, I suck at lying. <laughs> and so I was like, that's what I'm most afraid of. Um, but Kim, so she, I asked her, I'm like, how do you do it? Like, how do you lie so good? Mm-hmm. 
Um, that sounds super funny. How do you lie yeah, so right? Um, <laughs> anyway, is that even proper English? Like the well, I'm trying to decide which one. <laughs> <laughs> so she told me, she's like, well, what I do is I, and I've heard some variation of this before, but she says, I, I tell myself over and over that it's true. And then I start to believe it. And then I'm able to sincerely tell people because I believe that it's true, even though it's not. And so she has this, like, it's like a skill that I never thought about. Like lying is also a skill. Like if you don't do it a lot, you obviously suck at it. But I just never thought of like, people actually practice this stuff. <laughs> like, it's, like, How do you practice? <laughs> That's yeah, a pathological like, liar, right? That's yeah. what yeah. I mean, there's a that that's what I was gonna say. I'm like, there's a really fine line between what you're talking about and you know, sociopaths. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But she so, does it in a really genuine way, which is not something oh, yeah. you see very often. And so that's totally. that's partly why I'm so excited to see her. But like you said, she's not. She's not like Tony. She's not bombastic. So yeah, 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 yeah. it could be good for her early on. I think, and I think that that's her strength is she's so subtle mm -hmm. that it's really believable. I think um, there's something to that in Survivor. Like um, when you kind of like undersell your lies, it's just more believable because everybody's expecting you to be like all like, no, I swear on my children, you know, yeah. like that kind of lie. I think she's more like, no, I mean, we're totally good, Jonas. You know, don't, just don't even worry about it. She's just very like subtle that way. <laughs> now uh, go sit on the Jerry bench. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kind of what she did to Jay in your season, right? Where it was like, no, don't worry. You're totally safe tonight. You're going to be fine. Like, it's not going to be you. And then it's like, all right, we can't vote for Troy Zan because Troy Zan has an idol and Jay just told me. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> totally. And the, the thing that amazed me was when we got split, when I went to the uh, Misfits tribe and Troy Zan went over to Kim's tribe, I mean, it was like a three day period where we were split apart and previously we've been together let's see let me do the math like 15 days so i don't know like two weeks somewhere around there and like during those 15 days i felt like me and troy zan were like bros like dude i will take a bullet for you like you know nothing can split us apart in three days she she managed to just destroy all of that and convince him and Jay that I wasn't the one to go with, even though like I had a perfect voting record with Jay and Troy Zen. I voted the exact way that I said I was going to do every single time. Mm -hmm. There was zero reason to not believe me, but somehow they're like, no, we're fully on board with Kim and she's going to take us to the end. I'm like, bro, <laughs> what? I'm not scared of her now. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's frightful how how much she could infiltrate that alliance so fast. Like, and it was so obvious from the outside looking in, like what was happening. And I'm like, of course, I'm like, I hope this gets put on air because I'm calling it right now. You're gonna vote me out, and then the girls are gonna pick you off one by one. Mm -hmm. with exactly what happened and i was just like how can they not see this like this is so disturbing um but you know it happens every every season something like that happens right so i wonder um, if i wonder if she'll have an easier time doing that to some of the bigger personalities because troy zan was you know one of the bigger personalities on your season and yeah. i wonder if she's going to have an easier time with a tony or a sandra kind of telling them like, no, don't worry about it. We're great. Like, I want to go to the end with you and, and be a little bit more convincing to them and maybe have a harder time with some of the quieter people like a Sophie or a Yule Kwan, or maybe even Amber, who I don't know if she's going to be quiet or loud. Cause I just know yeah. that it's going to be difficult for her no matter what, but I wonder yeah. how she'll, where she'll have the easier time. It's a really good question. I honestly, I couldn't even begin to guess. I mean, it's, like I said, it's it's like the best of the best all coming to the table. And 
I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of randomness. I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's just no way to. Even if you're like the best psychiatrist in the world, I don't think you could figure out what's going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. there's just so many big players here. It's just. It's like putting all the best UFC fighters in the same cage and being like, just go, go, <laughs> we'll see who wins. That's kind of what's happening here. Um, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. It, it's, it's a, uh, it, to keep going with that. It's an unscripted Royal rumble. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> familiar with those, but in, in the WWF yeah. and WWE back when it was WWF, yeah. I remember there was this one time they did like a three ring Royal rumble, where if you get thrown out of the ring, you're out. And it was, I mean, that's obviously scripted, but this yeah. is an unscripted version of that where it's, yeah. you have, you've thrown every single person into the ring and there's going to be random people who have to get kicked out of the ring when everybody's just got their back turned. Like it's got, there's got to yeah. be randomness to this. Otherwise, how are you going to get some of these people out? Yeah. 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 It, no, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Well, Let's look at let's look at her starting tribe and you and you let's see where you think she's gonna go here yeah. or you know she starts off the women on her tribe are Amber Sandra yeah. Sarah Lucina and Sophie and then the men are Nick Tony Tyson Wendell and Yule yeah where do you see her going there like if you're if you got to predict who she would work with and who she might never work with what are you thinking I'm gonna say she'll probably team up with like people like Amber. Mm -hmm. Um, Sophie, maybe a Yule, because I'm just saying that because, um, you know, she clicked with Chelsea and Kat and they're sort of like a little more, um, like fun loving, not so analytical, maybe Yule, not so much. He seems super analytical. Um, but, uh, you know, Amber seems kind of a little less analytical more just kind of go with the flow i don't know maybe sandra i don't know i mean honestly it's there's if i had to guess i'd say amber sophie i'm just gonna go with my gut and say yule okay. um, just even though i just contradicted myself but just yeah. it just seems like she would vibe with those kind of personalities um yeah well <clears throat> so you didn't mention anybody from the Troyzan Alliance, which Troyzan believes that there's going to be an entire alliance pretty much based around him on this season because of people that he's played. Look at Jonas is already for anybody who's only listening. To think, to Jonas just fell out of his chair backwards, essentially. Um, <laughs> he's claiming that because of the people he's played with, all those people are going to team up and work together. So Kim, Sandra, Sarah, Tony. Uh, who else is on there? Was it uh, <clears throat> was that it, Alexa? Or was there somebody else that yeah, he was playing to? I think there's some on the other tribe. There might be, but then he started going to like I've breathed near them, so they might want to align with Kim. Like he's he was just really starting to pull at strings here. You buy into this at all? <laughs> That's a wild theory, but hey, you, you never know. I mean, I don't know, like. Are you talking like they had some kind of pre-meeting or like? No, he just thinks that they're going to get on the island and all be like, oh, we all like Troyzan, right? And like everybody's going to meet up and get together because of that. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's a wild theory, but who knows? <laughs> he'll, he'll be everyone's loved one. Um, I think you're on to something, though, with – the with Amber, Sophie, and I, I like Wendell too. You mentioned him earlier because I think she she seems to have a pretty low key personality, and I think like I can't imagine her trying to round up Tyson, Tony, and Sandra. That mm. just, that seems yeah. impossible for anybody to do. So I could I see her kind of working with kind of that quieter majority of the group. Yes, yes, I think she's more like she she's. Uh going after the more subdued type of people. She seems mm -hmm. to click more with them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're, she thinks they're easier to deceive. I don't know. I mean, just reading into it a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, so, it was a guys, I have a theory. I have a theory. Okay, let's hear it. Kim is going to align with Yule because he's Asian and I'm Asian too. That's it. That makes perfect go. sense, right? That's the whole thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> makes more sense than Troy's ants thing. The final two. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard it here on this podcast. Even I've never met him. It's it's like the silent Asian brotherhood. That's it. You can just sense it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give Troy some some smack. It's the Jonas it. Alliance. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to talk to him about this theory here. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, we we all know Troy Zan pretty well, and uh, it, you know, knowing Troy Zan, it makes sense that he thinks there's going to be an alliance totally based around Troy Zan. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where where was I going to go with that? So when I look at like who you were talking about Kim aligning with, I know on season thirty nine, the season that is currently airing, it's a bad word to say um, women's alliance that was shunned. Yeah. And at that one tribal council, but if there's somebody on this season, who's going to try to spring a women's Alliance, I feel like it's going to be Kim. And I don't even think it has anything to do with the fact that she doesn't want to work with the men. I think it has more to do with the fact of who Jonas said she just typically likes to work with. Yeah. And if she can work with Michelle and, and Amber and Sophie and, and even Denise, who is somebody who's also very laid back, very chill. I think those are the types of people that she could end up working with. And that's just an alliance. And yeah, you could sprinkle in people like Wendell and, and Yule who are both quiet and laid back, but it's going to look like a female alliance because there's more women in it. And I think that if Kim has control over the alliances that are made, we're going to see a predominantly female uh, dominated season. Yeah, that's, that's a good theory. That's a good theory. Yeah, I do think there's something to like um, matching up her personality with the people that she aligned with during my season. I think that that wasn't an accident. You know, I think the, the whole <clears throat> um, if you look at the people that she went to the end with, um, they were all pretty like. Um, so if you I don't know if you guys studied like the color code or the personality types, mm -hmm. she, she's like. Definitely a type A, but she kind of comes across as a kind of a more chill type A. I don't know what you call that. Like maybe it's a orange personality. I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I definitely think that she kind of gravitates more towards the where she can be the, the domineer, the dominant player, the person in control and have more of like followers. And I absolutely don't think that she's going to go to like a Tony, like you said, and be like, you know, the two A personalities, Hey, yeah, let's get together. That's just not going to happen. Um, right. I probably doubt that it will. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be super interesting. I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. And so like the final eight on your season, just to keep going with that, it's Kim, Chelsea, Sabrina, Christina, Alicia, Tarzan, Cat, and Troyzan. You have to go all the way back to Troyzan to really find your huge, huge type A personality. Okay, yeah. That's mm -hmm. also somebody though who's because Tarzan is definitely an over the top personality, but I didn't view Tarzan as somebody who was ever going to win Survivor. He was more there as a character. So you he go all the way. Philip, I was. I kept telling people, mm -hmm. I'm like, he's the Philip Shepard. He's the yeah. guy mm -hmm. that you want to take to the end, you know, because he's so out in left field and he's just you know that guy but anyway sorry to go off on a tangent no that's fine no, that's you're, fine. you're absolutely right those personalities except for Troy Zen, are all similar and she was just i mean and the thing about kim is she she appears on the outside to be this subdued super laid back person but she's clearly type a mm -hmm. and I, I i knew that before we even said a word to each other like just how she acted during the the pre-game she was kind of like always the first one in line to go and eat food i was like looking at her body i'm like clearly this girl like takes care of herself mm -hmm. she just kind of exuded type a personality but when she talks to you she seems so relaxed and fun and just kind of like she has this sort of like um um, apathetic sort of like I don't care it really doesn't matter kind of like she puts that off to people and they believe that but she's completely just crafting and weaving and like manipulating the situation she's really smart she's a she's um socially super intelligent mm -hmm. 
and um, she's able to kind of like be a chameleon socially too. So I think she does work well with the type A's, but she just doesn't like to align with them because she wants to be in control. So mm -hmm. yeah, I believe that. Um, so if we're looking at the other tribe here too, um, Kim's Kim, how old is Kim now? Is she 37 now, I believe, or something like you that. Know, 37 I, or three? To be honest with you, I, this may sound rude, but I don't know, and I don't I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 that's I mean, fine. I'm the person, but like I'm just not that kind of super fan. Um yeah, so I'm just, years old. I I'm just so glad I didn't actually know that. I'm yeah, thinking yeah. more out loud just because when I look at the other tribe and who's over there, you have people like Ben, Ethan, Jeremy, Boston, Rob, all around mm -hmm. the same age. Denise is a little bit older, but then you have Danny Boatwright, who I could see Kim working really well with. Yeah. You have Michelle, who's a little bit younger than the, all of them, and then Natalie Anderson and Parvati. So I was just thinking, like, if there was like an age type thing, because when yeah. Kim played the first season, I believe most of the people she was aligned with were younger than her. At least I know Kat was. I believe Chelsea was as well. Chelsea was, I think, only 21, yeah. 22, 22 yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. It's and all I think power, dude. So yeah. She has to be in control, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about it because I'm like, would she align with Adam Klein, who's, you know, I think he's he's my age. So he's like 28, maybe. Yeah. And, you know, Adam Klein's 28 years old. Is that somebody Kim wants to align with? Because she almost feels, you said power, but almost like a little bit superior just because of age, experience. And like, I feel like I can control this guy a little bit. Sure. It's not a radical theory, that's for sure. But because she's about to play with all other winners do like how do we think she would fare being maybe number three in a five person alliance maybe not so much in terms of pecking order but just not being the one making the decisions do you think it will be as easy for her to kind of take the back seat as she gives off or do you think she'd maybe kind of fight back and need to be there? I don't, yeah i don't think so i think she's I mean, just I'm going off of her previous game. Um, I think that it's just in her DNA to want control. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think she's a good follower. I don't. I don't see her taking the back seat. I think <clears throat> that she would just go to bulls with the type A competitor and just kind of duke it out before she was like, "Oh, I'll just let them kind of." You know, I'll just follow them. I just don't see her as a as a good follower. That's just mm -hmm. me. So if there's going to be a flaw in Kim's game, it's going to be if she doesn't feel like she's in control, she might overplay to try to get herself into the ultimate power position. Almost like what JT has done in the recent yeah. times he's played where he's not going to settle for 10th place. He's going to make the big move that ultimately makes him look like a fool to all of the fans, but yeah, he's yeah. playing to win at final 16. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, I think she's a lot more controlled, though. I, I mean, I say that she's not really a follower, but I think if out of all the type A's, I think that she would probably be the best at adapting to the situation. I don't think it's her first choice, but I do think that she's super agile. Mm -hmm. I just totally contradicted myself, but... <laughs> I'm just thinking she's so good. Like you, you don't understand like the, the Jedi mind tricks that she played on so many people are just baffling. Like you have no idea. Like when Kat came to Ponderosa, I'm not sure if you saw the videos, but mm -hmm. she was literally like, she just couldn't understand. Mm -hmm. she, even though like, I'm like, you do realize, like, have you seen the show before? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, she, but we were, like, really friends. And, like, and she was completely, like, she couldn't believe that, even though it would clearly happen, she's like, I just can't believe that it happened. Mm -hmm. And everybody was that way, like, I can't believe it. <clears throat> so I'm just saying, like, she's got some super Jedi mind powers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if she goes far. Honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. I do remember. Sorry, Alex. I know you were about to do the segue, but I can't yeah. help this. I do remember that Ponderosa video because 
I remember Troy Zan just like greeting Cat, and instead of being like, I'm so sorry, hon, I'm pretty sure he just goes, I told you it was going to be you. I told because it was right after Troy Zan went, and he just couldn't hold it together. And Jonas, you were like a great ambassador too with that Ponderosa because everybody, like, you go in and you're like laid back, and it's like, all right, this is going to be like a good time. And then everybody else who came in as they, as they started feeling closer and closer to Kim, it's just you being like, how did they not? How do they not see this? Like, what are they yeah. doing? So you want to hear a funny story? I'm ready. Um, okay, so Cat comes in, and everybody's like, "Grab her a beer, you know. Let's, you mm -hmm. know, make her feel at home." I'm like, "Trust me, adding alcohol to her <laughs> emotional state is not a good idea." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what ended up happening? So the the um the the um staff psychiatrist, <clears throat> she was like. Absolutely not. No alcohol. <laughs> so I like took the alcohol away. And I'm like, let's put that away. This is not good. It's like adding gas on the fire. But <laughs> wow, you, you saved a burning building, it sounded like. Oh my gosh. That would have been complete destruction. <laughs> <laughs> People forget Kat's first time, like how hard she took that. Because her second time, everybody always remembers her iconic who would want to date somebody who didn't make the, the jury, which is just fantastic. But people forget how hard she took it the first time because she was floored when she got voted out. Her face at that tribal. No, and this went on for like three, four days after. She would like be cool and then, I can't believe you invited me out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the power of kim spradlin right there everybody oh, that's it yeah. right there in a nutshell oh my god well alexa i saw what you were gonna ask i know yeah, you were gonna well, ask. Been a good segue but this that story was the story was too good so you at the beginning of this you said you wouldn't be surprised if kim didn't go far and then you just said kim could go far yeah. one thing we've been asking everybody is at the end of the day where do you predict Kim is going to land. It could be as generic as she makes the merge. You could say she makes. I'm just gonna go on a limb. And, I'm gonna go on a limb and say at least final three. I know I contradicted wow. myself, but like the more that. that I thought about it, I was like, hmm. <clears throat> because here's the thing. Um, I think the over the top people, like the Tonys, the Sandras. They're so blatantly good and they're just like, you know, survivor God status. A lot of people, this happens constantly to me. Oh, I love your season. Wait a minute, who won that season? Mm -hmm. that, that's how you, I feel like that's how you have to be in order to win in a group this strong and big and huge is to be that kind of like, Oh, we actually forgot about her. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> I think um, I think it's going to be one of those more subtle players. Um, I would say Amber, maybe mm -hmm. she she is kind of a big personality, like as far as like recognizability. But I don't think you you would you wouldn't view her as like a Tony. Where like, oh. We gotta watch out for her. You know what I mean? Like Tony, like, oh snap! It's Tony. Let's get yeah. him out now. You know what I mean? <clears throat> because he was just such a huge personality, and he really, um, he was an airtime hog too. I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> like I wanted to watch that guy. I was super sad when he got voted out. Um, so that's that's my theory. <laughs> yeah, and Tony's one of the rare instances where the face of the season also won the season. That very rarely happens on Survivor, but that was one instance where you know the guy who ate up all of the screen time was also the guy who was going to go out and win. And I think that's why he's so prevalent in everybody's mind. And I think about when this season's going to start, my dad, who has watched every single season of Survivor, is gonna see Sophie Clark and go, Who is that? Yeah. I have no clue who that is. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's better for yeah. people. You I want to be that Sophie person. Sophie and too. I actually uh, were in casting together. Okay. Really? So I don't know if like if there's any rule about talking about casting. But anyway, her and I were in casting together. And I remember her specifically because uh, she was drawing pictures of all the other 
people in the crowd and she was like oh wow like this girl is strategic man she's mm-hmm. like drawing pictures she's like real pictures not just like little stick figures legit like Ooh. pictures and they were like really realistic and i'm sure she was like going back to her hotel room and like oh yeah this person this person <laughs> so i kind of i i could tell that she was super like strategic mm-hmm. but i had no idea that she was going to win but we ended up being cast in on different seasons mm-hmm. um well, would she be allowed into the Jonas um, alliance here between Kim yeah. and Yule? Can Sophie be in that? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. I'm an equal opportunity employer. <laughs> That's your final three. There we go. For sure, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Alexa, the other question, the all-important. All right, so another question we've been asking is if you can't – if if you if you take Kim out of the season, who else would you pick to be the winner? If you can't kick – Pick Kim. Who's gonna? Who? Who do you think is gonna win? Really good question. I don't think it's gonna be one of the like people that when you think of Survivor All Stars, you think of that person. It's not gonna be any of those. It's not gonna be a Parvati. Uh, uh, you know, any of the the just the quintessential Survivors. It's not right. gonna be one of those. So, um, I would say Sophie. Um, and again, I just contradicted myself again because <laughs> I told Amber, but so I'm going to say, let's see, uh, Sophie, Michelle, um, I'm just looking at the list here. Um, maybe Sarah, one of those, I think one mm-hmm. of those are just going to kind of pull a Sandra yeah, move. And pull a Sandra. Because that's kind of what Sandra did, right? When she got to play again, she sort of did the same thing. And the first time she kind of did that too. I think um, because everybody's expecting these like the Tonys and, you know, the Tysons, the, the people that, like I said, they think of when they think Survivor, mm-hmm. they're just too obvious and easy and they've been around so long that all the other guys that are kind of like new school survivor are going to be like, let's get them out. You know what I mean? They've just had too much exposure as the winners is what I'm saying. That's my theory. Now we have to play, we have to be tough with you though. You have to pick one. We can't, we can't let you get away with picking three here, Jonas. You got to pick. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Man. This is going on the record. People but are going to hear you say that. I can't say Kim, right? Can't say yeah. Kim. So, huh. You mentioned Sophie, Michelle, and uh, Sarah. And Amber. And Amber, excuse me. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to say Michelle. All right. It never gets old, Alexa. It really does. I love it. So, Jonas, I know I know that we were talking beforehand. So, Michelle is like my favorite ever. And everybody just keeps picking Michelle, and it just makes really? me so happy. Yeah. Good, you're, good pick. She's a very popular pick right now. I think because of everything you've said on this podcast, sh- nobody is looking at Michelle as a threat when they walk out onto yeah. that island. If Michelle goes pre merge, it's because something absolutely insane happened, and there was yeah. just no way she could have survived it. Yeah. She's going to be at the merge. And all, sometimes right. all you got to do is what Sandra did. She made the merge in Heroes Villains. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, well, we don't have to worry about her. We have JT and Rupert and Colby and, and Russell and yeah. Parvati. And it's like, yeah, yeah, but you still have Sandra. Don't forget about her. And they forgot about her. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think there's something to be said about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. I love this. So like when, when we release all of these, we're going to put like who was the most popular winner pick. And Alexa, tell correct me if I'm wrong. Is there a prize for the right pick or? Ooh. Ooh, we didn't even think about that. Hmm. This is this is the 16th one of these we've done, and we have not thought about a prize. <laughs> so right now, Michelle and Jeremy are tied for the most popular picks. Uh, okay. They have been picked four times each. Kim so far has been picked twice. So Kim is a pretty good pick too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there you go. So out of 16, you're the 16th one we've done. And half of the time, either Jeremy or Michelle has been picked. That's pretty big. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Picks. 
it's it's a little bit quieter of personalities who don't have such a hard time taking a back seat who are willing to work their way you know work maybe from the bottom because both of them have done it so absolutely absolutely yeah. Jonas we just got like a we just got like a good description of how to win survivor from a very laid back guy telling you be laid back you don't have to be super aggressive well, on survivor i i would definitely say uh you know take my advice with a grain of salt based mm. on my uh, track record but uh, i'm flattered by your your comment and who knows who knows what I, I think i have to be a pat pathological liar I, I don't know what you guys are saying <laughs> sure. that's what i learned <laughs> hey you know look at look at the the people and you just yeah you have the one thing that's very clear if you suck at lying you suck at survivor <laughs> yeah i'm looking forward that. i'm looking forward to there's going to be a speech on this season where kim's going to be talking to somebody and it's going to be such a blatant lie to me as a viewer but not to the person she's talking to and i'm going to go that's what jonas said she does there it is <laughs> she's doing it right now i'm looking forward to that very much that's awesome well, Jonas, we've pretty much covered everything. Do you have anything else you want to add in here about Kim or about anybody else maybe that we didn't talk about that much that you want to throw in? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pumped to see Tony. I don't know what it was about Tony, but Tony, he was one of my all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. I know some people like just hate him, but like what I like about Tony, and this is not like, you know, the Tony endorsement show, but I like Tony because he was aggressive but, and he was cutthroat, but he wasn't at all um, mean about it. Mm -hmm. Like, you could tell there was not a mean bone in his body. He was just out there, a kid having fun playing Survivor. Whereas some of the other people, you like, um, let's take, for example, like a Russell. Mm -hmm. You felt like he was legitimately, like, he had some anger towards those people whereas tony it was just like a game the whole time and it was hilarious mm -hmm. um and you know i don't know i just like people from new york i just <laughs> love them so anyway i am excited for more llama noises yeah <laughs> <laughs> i can make a season of that awesome yeah, I know. I, I hope he survives longer than he did in Game Changers because in Game Changers, he had no chance and he didn't help himself out. So I hope he does a little bit better this time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, Alexa. Well, maybe you want to take it home. I think we're good. That's Tony, Kim, and Michelle have been endorsed on this podcast well, and the Jonas Alliance. On this podcast. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we're releasing this only like three weeks after we recorded it, as opposed to some, which we recorded about six months ago. So uh, yeah, make sure to become a patron, go to patreon.com backslash survivor specialist. And Jonas, thank you so much for coming on. We had a, we had a really good time talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Jonas.